Hello, my name is Jennifer Nayer. I am an instructor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and an associate physician at Brigham and Women's Hospital in the Division of Gastroenterology. I will be speaking about my study entitled Impact of Physician Adherence to Colonoscopy Surveillance Guidelines on Interval Colon Cancer. This study was accepted for publication in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy in October of 2016. The aims of our study were to describe characteristics of patients with interval colon cancer in a large healthcare system. Our second aim was to assess if the development of interval colon cancer is associated with colonoscopy surveillance guidelines. The purpose behind this study was to determine if there is a relationship between colonoscopy surveillance guidelines and the development of interval colon cancer. We know that colonoscopies have to be performed at optimal intervals to remove permalignant lesions and prevent interval colon cancer. We have guidelines that tell us when to bring our patients back for screening and surveillance procedures. But prior studies have shown that up to 30% of patients receive colonoscopy surveillance interval recommendations that are not in line with guidelines. The next logical question to us is, what happens to these patients who do not get the right follow-up recommendations? And even if patients are getting the correct follow-up recommendations, is this helping us prevent interval colon cancer? Our study is the first to evaluate the effect of surveillance guidelines on the risk of interval colon cancer. We looked at a cohort of interval colon cancer patients collected from two tertiary care centers and an affiliated community hospital. We found 245 interval colon cancer, interval colon cancers over an eight-year study period, which ended in December of 2014 which gave us a prevalence of interval colon cancer of 4.6%, which is in keeping with other studies on the subject. The vast majority of these patients had an adequate preparation and a complete exam to the CT. The first crucial finding from our study was that over half of our interval colon cancer cases occurred before guideline recommended surveillance intervals. We concluded from this that national guidelines may not be adequate to identify many interval colon cancer cases. Some would say this finding is not surprising because the etiology of interval colon cancer can be broken down into two areas. The first is preventable causes, and the other is biological factors, which are more difficult to prevent. Colonoscopy surveillance should protect against preventable causes, such as missed lesions and incompletely resected polyps, but rapidly growing tumors due to biological factors may not be as well protected against. So even if all patients get their colonoscopies done at the right time, interval colon cancers will still develop. We also need to work on technique and being able to prevent missed lesions as well as incompletely resected polyps. We then wanted to identify factors that increase the risk of developing interval colon cancer prior to guideline follow-up recommendations. To do this, we did a regression analysis and we found no factors that increased the risk of interval colon cancer. We did find protective factors for the development of interval colon cancer which were the presence of three or more polyps and an inadequate preparation on index colonoscopy. These two groups, three or more polyps and inadequate preparation, get more frequent colonoscopies, which may be why they were protected against developing interval colon cancer. However, we feel that the answer is not to screen everyone very frequently. Our study did not look at the cost of frequency of surveillance, and this should be considered when making these types of decisions. I think the most interesting and actionable finding from our study is that one quarter of interval colon cancer cases were given a follow-up recommendation by the endoscopist beyond the current guideline recommendations. Many of these recommendations were made before the 2015 updated guidelines, so our study cannot assess endoscopists' ability to provide patients with correct surveillance recommendations. However, we think it is important that 90% of this subset of cases were diagnosed with colon cancer in the window between when the guidelines said they should have come back and when endoscopists told them to come back. Many of these patients were given recommendations for follow-up prior to the 2015 uh, updated guidelines, as I mentioned, which changed the recommendation for patients with a fair prep to come back within one year. Our study was not designed to assess whether endoscopists provide correct follow-up recommendations to patients. However, we think that our findings underscore the importance of the updated 2015 colonoscopy surveillance guidelines, as well as the importance of endoscopists providing the correct surveillance intervals for patients. In summary, our study, looking at 245 interval colon cancer cases, showed that most interval colon cancers occur before guideline recommended surveillance intervals, suggesting that national guidelines may not be adequate to identify most interval colon cancers. 
Our findings also highlight the significance of adherence to the current surveillance guidelines in the prevention of interval colon cancer, particularly in repeating colonoscopies at a short interval for patients with inadequate preps. I want to thank my co-authors for working on this study with me, and thank you for your time and for the opportunity to discuss our study.